as if you were going to fool me. But in no, some way, but it, and it's I'm the only head. one here. <laughs> but I got I wrote I wrote it down in my head while I did that. I have a, sure. I made a mental note that helps me. But Go ahead, check, please. But check it out; it's good. Um, the Changeling. Okay. Now, for those of you that are like, "Oh, I've seen the Changeling," give me something a little, uh, you know, harder to find. Okay, I've got an import for you guys. Now, you guys in Britain are going to be able to find this very easily because it was released there. But here in the states, you got to import it. It's a film called The Cold Hour. Now, in Britain, it's called The Dark Hour for some reason, but it's called The Gold Hour, La Hora Fria. It's a Spanish film that played at Fantastic Fest last year, and it's so freaking good. It is the story of... What's it called? <clears throat> the Cold Hour. The Cold Hour, okay. It is the story of, an, of the end of the world. It's a post-apocalyptic film told to the eyes of an eight-year-old boy who's living underground with some of the last members of what he believes to be humanity. And it is the story of them trying to survive against something. And it is just so good. It's one of those films that just gets better and better as you watch it. And then the last 10 seconds of the film are one of the biggest, best, twisty fuck yous ever. That You just do not, you cannot see this thing coming. And you're just like, holy shit. Now, wait a minute, it's a uh, post-apocalyptic movie what told to the eyes of an eight-year-old kid? Yeah, and it's a post-apocalyptic horror film. And it's it's just so good. Uh, it's all about them trying to survive against these unnatural things. And it is just such a good, creepy, solid film. If you have not seen this movie, you need to track this one down. Where's this is it one from? of my favorites. It's from Spain. From Spain. Damn, Spanish, boy. They do, they do Dude, some... Uh, the they Spanish do... are exploding right now. They are just And when did this incredible. come out? Well, uh, it... it it opened in Spain last year about this time. It played at Fantastic Fest last year. Uh, and then it's been slowly coming out all over the world on DVD. And uh, I know that it's been in Britain for at least six months. So you can uh, – in, in the UK, you can find it in your video stores under the, the dark hour. The dark hour or the cold hour. Mm -hmm. I'll check that out. Now, see, I'm making an air mental note right. The cold that hour. one's – that – it's a really good movie. The cold hour. I got it. Now, I heard that uh, – that a little robot friend of ours suggested Night of the Scarecrow. I was telling you this before we recorded. Co-host yeah. was saying how he saw it on TV and how you can't find it anywhere. But he said the last 10 minutes of that movie scared the shit out of him. Yeah, um, that is a movie I've been hearing about for years. Like, cause that was, that was one of those made for TV horror films back when they actually made, made, you know, mo made for TV movie of the week. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's what he said. It was a TV movie. And I was like, wow, that's pretty hardcore for a TV movie. And it's, it's, it's one of those that's notorious because people want to find it and they can't. And it's one of those that I'm sure the rights are probably tied up in some weird, crazy thing. Cause that happens all the time where there, there's a movie that, for some reason, somebody buys the rights to it, and that person vanishes off the face of the earth, and nobody can find them. That's what happened with Angus. That's why you can't find Angus on DVD, is because the some guy in like Norway. Now what is Angus or Iceland? Oh, it's just a a, a cool high school movie from nineteen like ninety six. Um, <clears throat> that's a really good little film, but you can't find it because some guy from like Iceland bought the rights, and the director can't find him. Uh, but no, so, uh, yeah, no, Night of the Scarecrow is weird that he recommended that because it's like, nobody's going to find that film. But you reminded me because there's another film like that, another made for uh, but TV that, movie. Although that movie is going to be coming out, uh, probably, on, uh, I don't know when, but it's coming we'll out see. on DVD. It's been is, for years. It was supposed to come out. It's one of those that has just vanished. Okay. That's what he was saying. Yeah. I, don't know. I hope so. Cause I would really like to see this cause, and I hope it holds up cause everybody who's, I, every six months or so I get an email in which somebody's like, dude, can you help me remember this movie? It's about this and this and it has a scarecrow. I'm like, it, it's called night of the scarecrow and you can't find it. Ever. The only reason I know about it is cause people like you keep emailing me about it, asking me if I know about it. Yeah. But it reminded me of a little film. That you would never heard of. <clears throat> what is that? Uh, another made-for-TV horror film from the same period of time, like 1978, called Killdozer. Okay, yeah. I was asking you about that. What, what is that? Killdozer is one of the worst movies ever fucking made. It is awful. It was a made-for-TV movie filled mostly with filler about, and get this, stay with me here. It's about a meteorite that falls from outer space and hits... A bulldozer. Oh my! Okay, uh, is this going where I think <laughs> it's going? This is, okay. and it's, and it's called 
Killdozer. Can, can you imagine what the rest of the film's about? It's so, about a killer bulldozer that drives around by itself and runs people over who just kind of stand there screaming until it hits them. It's so bad. A meteor brings a bulldozer to life. Then, oh my God. All right. And it's, it's available on YouTube. <laughs> now I've heard everything. It's, you could, you could find it on YouTube or at least you used to be able to. I can't imagine that somebody would argue it <clears> on YouTube. I did about 10 years ago when IMDb had first started up, I started a thread and was compiling a list of the worst movies ever. So at the time, IMDb didn't have a bottom 100 and that mm-hmm. kind of inspired them to, uh, I don't know if that directly inspired them, but within a short period of time, there was a bottom 100. And, um, uh, and I was compiling a list and had everybody, you know, on the forums sending me emails saying, Hey, let me know what your list is of the top 10 worst movies ever made. And everybody's list had Killdozer on it. That's how I found out about it. I'm like, what the fuck is Killdozer? So I had to track it down and find a bootleg of it. And man, is it fucking I'm awful. Am- I'm amazed with a hot concept like a uh, killer bulldozer that came to life from a comet. I but it's how literally that wrong. It's how, uh, but when you watch it, you see that it's even worse <laughs> than you can imagine because the production values on it are just awful. There's like literally minutes and minutes of footage of a bulldozer driving itself across fields. It's so fucking awful. Nice. So we get to see a bulldozer just drive around when not, not even killing people. Just at times, around. not even killing people. Oh, nice. So, and, but you, it's, and you're recommending this. No, not at all. Unless <laughs> you're one of those people who want to see one of the worst movies ever made, Killdozer is it. So, I mean, definitely check that out. Now, other things that I recommend. Um, yeah. If you haven't seen, you know, there's a film that came out last year and it's on DVD now um, called, uh, oh, why the fuck did I just forget its name? Never heard of it. I, I'm going to move on to another film that's exactly the same way, Hatchet. Oh, Hatchet, yeah. Hatchet, a great fun <laughs> slasher film. Co-host loves that movie. Yeah, no, it's a re- have you seen it? Uh, no, I have not. Dude, seen I'll end it to you. It's really fucking good. Yeah, I asked him if I could borrow uh, his copy, and I haven't. I yeah, haven't it's yet. it's just a fun, good old fashioned eighty slasher movie. It was made by a guy named Adam Green, and Adam is a huge fan of slasher movies, and hated that point in the eighties where it went from we were trying to make serious slasher movies to fuck it. Let's just go crazy and hates the really stupid, terrible slasher movies. And so he wanted to go back to that era and make a fun, serious, funny slasher movie. That's a really funny film and it's just really well made. Um, I definitely recommend that. Uh, and then of course, uh, another fun one is abominable. Uh, is that the eighties movie where, Wait, no, no. This was another one made a couple of years back. But there's an. They, have you heard of an 80, 80s movie called uh, Abominable, where a girl gives birth to like some some deformed kid who, of course, grows up to be like some uh, hideous killer. Uh, no. Uh, okay, maybe it might have a different name. But go ahead with yours. You, well, you Abominable, Abominable is literally about Bigfoot. <laughs> it's Rear Window with Bigfoot instead. And so it's, what? Bigfoot is somebody's neighbor going to his. No, a day. guy's a guy is in a wheelchair uh, and he's in his cabin in the woods and, um, <laughs> and he sees, he sees Bigfoot, Bigfoot kill somebody <laughs> and Bigfoot kills people and there's a, a he's got a, a there's a group of of young uh, often naked college girls in the cabin next to his who start getting picked off one by one and it's a, it's a fun movie it's just a good old fashioned fun time they showed it on. Uh, on uh, uh, sci- uh, fi- Sci-Fi Channel. The Sci-Fi Channel picked it up as one of their Sci-Fi originals. See, when you describe it as Bigfoot in Rear Window, I picture a guy in a wheelchair at home seeing Bigfoot across the street hosting parties, <laughs> having a good time, living in the house, and then he thinks, hey, that Bigfoot kills somebody. <laughs> Everybody likes him, but he's mysterious. Not exactly. Okay. But, yeah. Which would make an awesome, badass movie if that was the case, too. But So what is the movie that you can't remember? God, I'm, I, I, I hate that the... the, the the title totally vanished from my head. It was another movie put out by Anchor Bay, and it was uh, a documentary about a serial killer. And I'm bl- – God, now now, now I, I was trying to move past it so you wouldn't ask me about it again. It's um, a documentary. Is it, I mean, is it a fake documentary? Yeah, it's a fake documentary and, about a serial killer. And it's – And it's, 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 it's a, the name of it like uh, it's the, the mask of Jordy somebody or something like that? Does that make sense? Yes. It's the uh, – God, behind the mask. That's behind the called. mask. Behind the there mask. You go. Yeah. Behind the mask, and it is such a cool, weird, quirky film. It's it's a um, it's about a crew who tracks down a guy who's a serial killer, at, but not just a serial killer. He's actually a you know one of those movie stalker 
serial killers. He's like Jason and Freddy, and he's got this whole myth behind him, and they track him down, yeah. and he shows them how he sets up his thing and make it come across like he's actually supernatural. <laughs> and it's yeah, it's so freaking good. It's um it's because it's it, this guy isn't supernatural, but he's got a whole philosophy behind what but he does. But everybody thinks he is like he's But everyone Jason thinks he is because he he the way he he trains and the way he 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 teaches you how he sets up the house and sets up all the kills before it happens just by predicting human nature. And look, what's going to happen is I there's a mattress upstairs in this house. And I know that one of the couples is going to go up there. So when the couple goes up there, here's what I'm going to do. And I've got this already set up, and I, I'm going to be waiting here and and predicting. And this is when I cut the power. And it's just – it's so cool. And it's funny, and it's creepy, and it's actually good. So uh, that one, Behind the Mask, check that out. Um, uh, uh, these are all – there's a nice gamut there. If you there's something something you haven't seen in there, I absolutely assure you. Uh, and then of course, I can't believe none of you guys mentioned Wreck. Well, I mean, I've mentioned Wreck so much that everybody yes, knows. Yeah. It's it's so obvious that I didn't I didn't want to say anything. But now, isn't it isn't it supposed to be out now? Isn't it on video or something? Is it uh, on DVD? I think in a couple of more months. Ugh, yeah. they're they're holding it off till the DVD release of Quarantine. It seems so. Yeah. So. <sighs> Yeah, but uh, I, of course, Rick, people, you've heard me talk about a Spanish movie about uh, people trapped in an apartment building. Uh, there's an outbreak of some sort of disease that makes people rampaging zombies, and it's a really cool movie. And speaking of documentaries, it does follow that whole documentary format. It's, it's the found. It's actually not the documentary format as much as it's the found footage format. Yeah, it's that's it's, exactly. it's like Cloverfield, but uh, it's like Cloverfield and Blair Witch Project, except that because the main character shooting the thing is actually a trained cameraman, you don't suffer from shaky cam. Oh, which some is, people still say that though that they look at this and they're like, yeah, uh, but that's because know. people want something to bitch about. They want, yeah, oh, right. it's shaky. The, dude, the camera stays still. You don't even know what fucking shaky cam is. Shaky cam was fucking Blair Witch Project, where it was all over the fucking place. You couldn't even see what was on the screen. And as much as I like Cloverfield, that was a lot of people said, man, I'm getting motion sickness from this. So, well, some people yeah. do, but it's it was it's like four uh, percent of the population gets motion sickness from from films. Oh, shit, and, I, and I know all of them apparently. So because <laughs> all my friends are bitching about, man, I got threw up after that oh get fucking complaining but yeah uh I, we were talking about this uh um I, what happened was i did a quick thing with uh cyrus on his show and leah because they they thought i was like walking dead and i would come in and talk about it i didn't i couldn't even hang with that because they were just getting real oh dude those comics. guys those, those guys out nerd you when it comes oh, to comic books they out nerd everybody when it no comes i to mean comic i'm books. not even like i said i don't i'm i do not keep up with comics these days i buy them i read a little bit but i don't try to i don't what can i tell you they I can't out nerd me but when it comes to comic books they can yep apparently so yes leon and those and cyrus together and but we did talk about movies, and uh, I did talk about one movie. If you want to see something that is truly horrifying, and they're not even killing people for real, but they're killing animals for real, is zom- I mean, the Cannibal Holocaust. Oh, we dude, talk dude. about the we've, we've talked thing. about this before. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and it's it's not a movie. I I prefer not to mention this movie because it really is one of those movies that will fuck you up for life. Yeah, I mean, but I think that's why somebody should see it because I saw. No, it, if if like, you hey. are willing to be fucked up for life, if cinematically you want to be fucked up for life, uh, Cannibal Holocaust will do it. I like to say, if you like to have your eyeballs raped, then that would be, and, and <laughs> quite literally and and raped well. That's the thing is, it's not a bad movie. It's a no, good it's actually movie. A really good movie. It's a really good movie. I just don't like when really... they tear that turtle apart. I couldn't take it. <laughs> there's, there's so much stuff. In <laughs> kill that, that movie. possum, man. I mean, oh. it's just it's so cruel. I mean, if you kill it to eat it, that's one thing. But killing it just to make a movie, god damn. Uh, but if you know, we were talking about stuff that you could find on uh, TV movies that were actually from the seventies or maybe eighties, and they're in their horror movies. Uh, there was one movie that I saw, I and I, I think it was rerun, and I saw somebody watching it, and I was, and as a kid, it scared the shit out of me. But as an adult, it's the dumbest thing you'll ever see. It's Trilogy of Terror. You heard oh this? God! They With show Karen bits. Black. They show they show the Karen Black scene all the time at the Alabama. Well, Karen Black house. is in every one of them. It's three stories, and each of them feature Karen Black. Okay, People. I've only seen the I've only seen the one with the puppet. Okay, yes. Karen Black is a character actor, big in the eighties and the seventies, and she she's in this uh, this this anthology, this horror anthology that was a TV movie, 
And I don't even remember the first two, but that last one, when I was a kid and saw somebody watching, it scared the fuck out of the me. Puppet. It's a little Zulu puppet. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Zulu warrior doll. And it says, the directions on it say, do not take a chain off or something. She removes it. The thing comes to life. And it's, it's such a stupid thing. It's a fucking puppet on a stick. Yeah. And you can see people working it. And, and when it's chasing her, it says, yeah, 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 yeah. And she's running from it. Like, she locks the door and is sticking a knife under the door. And, and it... it she and, puts it in a suitcase and starts yeah, and stabbing it, through the suitcase. It it's so <laughs> ridiculous. But as a kid, it scared the fuck out of me. I think as an adult, I mean, it might even be a creepy concept if they did it again. No. But I, it, I feel like if they remade that and actually made it look like a, an actual demon doll that was coming after you, that could be kind of creepy. No. Not some Chucky shit. No. But this the doll. The, the doll's played out, dude. The doll is fucking played out. Not this doll. The doll is played not out. Not this man. You the need doll this doll is, is terrifying. A little doll. With a oh, when we were kids, out. yeah. But there's a lot of shit that scared the shit out I of us. Bring as kids that, that I want to bring that. I want. I want somebody now. to bring that terror back. Oh, and, and properly. That, that doll scared the fuck out of me when I was a kid. But looking at it now, it's it's yeah. It's you could tell. It's like what? It's like a toy. <laughs> it's not even. They don't even try to articulate the arms or anything. It's just no. It's <laughs> it's so fun. They like I said, they played at the draft house a lot because. It's really fucking funny the first eight times you watch it. And then it's just like, oh, Jesus, God, this is bad. Please stop. Fucking Muppet running through the house. No, it's not even a Muppet. That's the thing. It's not even a good puppet. It's just retarded. It's it's almost as if you took like a Barbie doll and put it on a popsicle stick and made it bounce across the screen. (laughs) But that was made for TV movies for you, man. I mean, now we've got the made for cable movies, which are the same thing. Yeah, uh, sci-fi channel, all that shit, man. I mean... I watch so many bad horror movies on there with CG now. It's like CG has taken the. Pl- I never thought that CG could look worse than a fucking puppet on a stick, but <laughs> Sci- Sci-Fi Channel has there managed are, to do it. There are times. All right. Now, keep in mind that the Sci-Fi Channel, the, the word Sci-Fi original doesn't actually denote that Sci-Fi Channel had anything to do with making the film. Sometimes it does, but a lot of the times they pick up independent films that just haven't gotten picked up. And uh, say, hey, we'd like to buy it for four hundred thousand dollars, you know, uh, to show yeah. as a sci-fi original. Uh, yeah, Lionsgate. Speaking of horror stuff, they were originally slated to release uh, one of Marvel's. Uh, well, I don't know if it was exactly a horror title, but the Man Thing. Man Thing. Yeah, and Lionsgate was going to release that, but that they bad. didn't. Yeah, I saw it. It was terrible, and it's actually a cool character. It was. It was Lionsgate pretty much, had the it, rights it, to a bunch of Marvel guys, and, and this yeah. killed it. And that's and, and they took that and showed it on the Sci Fi Channel. It's uh, it's Swamp Thing. Anybody know Swamp Thing from uh, from DC Comics? This is Marvel's answer to Swamp Thing, the Man Thing. Uh, and yeah, they made a movie about the Man Thing, and it was terrible. But it was it, it Sci Fi Channel. Than, it was worse than Swamp Thing. Uh, man, Swamp. Have you ever seen Swamp Thing? I love Swamp. Swamp. Thing. And, and have you seen the sequel? I love. I love the sequel. Oh, Return no, of Swamp Thing. No. Man, as a DVD movie or a movie straight to video, that was actually pretty cool. Nothing can beat Adrian Barbeau in the Wes Craven original. Oh, man. Well, Adrian Barbeau got those, uh, for lack of a better word, those titties, boy. She did. She did. <laughs> Are you crazy? Yeah. I've seen, I, I just, I met Adrian Barbeau last year. Did she flash you? No. Oh, that's too bad then. She, Dude, she's like 60. I, I'm, she, yeah. she was really hot back in the day, but... Now she doesn't even look like her. Okay, that's now that's that's curious to know. What does she look like today? Completely different than she did thirty years ago. I, and I guess that's not a good thing. No, I mean, I mean, she, not, yeah. I mean she looks like an, an older woman, but she doesn't. For some reason, she doesn't look anything like herself. I and mean, I was introduced to her, and I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding! She doesn't look like who she anything like who she did. Okay, I think well, she's had she had some work done, and it just went in a direction. Does she get implants what she at least? Like. I mean, I are, they, are they down to her feet? Because she had big knockers, man. She, I mean, yeah, man. she did. I don't. I don't. I, That's you know, what she to was be honest, I, To be honest, I didn't even pay attention. It was one of those things where I was just awed by the fact that, oh my God, this is Adrian Barbeau. Okay, like, when let, I grew up, she was this. like the hottest thing. Oh yeah, no, every kid was wanking at her. Uh, now, did you when you looked at her? Did you did the words? Damn, she looks like shit. Come to your mind? No. Okay, all right. Then. So no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't anything mean or cruel like that. It was literally the. It was the weirdness that she didn't quite look like who she looked like back in the day it was like she like transformational okay all right so so all right so she morphed all right oh well before we get out of here i have uh an appropriate email an email an email yeah and it is i think this is a good one for both of us to answer is from immaculate (laughs) 
Take that as you will. I will. And Immaculate says, I'm writing to tell you how much. Oh, okay. I'm not going to get to that part. Anyway, here's a question. Good. Uh, what do you think of the upcoming Friday the 13th movie? Looking forward to it? And what effect do you think Michael Bay will have on it? And could you please say what you think about the other Jason series? Well, I don't know what the other, I guess the originals, I guess is what he's saying, but that is uh, from Immaculate who, uh, who, yeah, I thought he had a different name down here, but it just says respect. All right. So you're, the, you're a big Michael Bay fan, first of all. Well, I mean, I'm a Michael Bay fan, but Michael Bay is just a producer on there. It's, it's, and he's only a producer in the sense that it's his, his company that he started up, yeah, Platinum Dunes. Exactly. Which did Friday, it. I mean, uh, which did Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, I'm told and, that uh, he's involved in these and that he comes in and that, but he's very much about, he, he brainstorms stuff. He kicks around ideas <laughs> with the, with the directors, but he's one of those guys who tries to stay hands off with the director and let the director make his own film and his own vision that as a director himself, he tries to be the type of producer he likes to deal with. Um, so, and that's what I've been told by a couple of different guys who've made films for platinum dunes. What do I think about this one? I think all they can do is improve it. Uh, the series got goddamn fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Um, uh, they peaked at seven. And I'm not, I was never in, I've got to be honest. I was never in love with that series to begin with. I always thought it was a silly villain. I always thought he was, he was a little too goofy. Um, uh, I mean, it, it's always been kind of one of those offensive things because they ripped off John Carpenter in a big way when they made this film. And then for years, Sean, you're talking about they ripped off Halloween, Halloween. Yeah. And, and for years, Sean S Cunningham was like, no, we didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't. And then about 10 years ago, he's like, yeah, no, we really did kind of rip off Halloween. We, yeah, we, yeah, we killed in a mask. Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, and, and they just, it was just an ex. It, it was always an excuse just to kill, you know, fucking teenagers, literally fucking <laughs> teenagers. And, <laughs> And it just got more and more ridiculous. And then Seven was actually cool. I dig Seven. That's the one where it's uh, Jason versus the psychic. You know, oh, yeah. The yeah, who, the girl. Yeah. Who can, the telekinetic. And that's a cool one. They do some fun stuff with it. And then Eight is when Jason takes Manhattan. And, and then the they thing, had Jason goes to hell. And, well, yeah. it went off the rails because Jason goes to hell is all about creating a whole, some smart ass thought he could actually create a cool mythology. And it was one of the most retarded things in the world where Jason is actually really just this like worm like thing that's escaped hell. And then it just starts body hopping. And Jason is really just this entity and the body of Jason is destroyed. And all these other people start killing because this thing takes over. Yeah, them. exactly. And yeah. then 10 was, you know, Jason in space. And that's where they're like, fuck it. You know something? And let me say, I saw the teaser for this new Friday the 13th. And as skeptical as I was, it, it the teaser, and it's just a teaser. I don't know what to say. They show you a bunch of trees and shit, and they they they, they give you a little bit of that. Ch -ch and then, ch -ch 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 yeah, and then they show the final shot where Jason is running up on some chick. I mean, running up on her ass and is about to chop her. And I have to say, it looked cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm and when I, I'm like with anything else, it's a remake, so I will gladly just sit back and wait for it to come out and judge it appropriately when it comes out. Now I've uh, I've I've said this before, and and I'll say it again. Look, uh, Jason, Freddy, Pinhead, Michael, uh, these are our our generation's universal monsters. These are Dracula, Frankenstein, yeah. the Mummy, the creature from the Black Lagoon. I don't care if they make. 12 million remakes of these monsters because the, it's just a cool concept for a monster and I'm always willing to see new takes on it because that's exactly what yeah, it is. No, you yeah, can yeah. never take the original away from me. Uh, you cannot ro you cannot come into my house and rob me of Halloween. They sure, you could steal take, your mind. You could take my copy, but they'll sell me another one. And so with this... Is it gonna? Is it an insult to the franchise or anything? No, it's not. In fact, if anything, I think at this point they could make Jason cool again. Yeah, I mean, and hopefully they'll do that. As for the series, I I'm like you. I was never I was never that kid that grew up pretty much seeing slashes as my heroes. So I didn't give a shit about these movies. I I mean, if they were cool, I thought they were cool. Like I went to go see part three 
uh, and you know that was in 3D, and I thought, oh, hey, that's kind of fun, and and it's stupid as shit, but and that was the one where he first got his hockey mask. So yeah. I thought, like, hey, I was there, I was there for the beginning, but they did get progressively silly as they went along, and when they finally got to ten, I'm one of those few people that likes ten because oh, I, I love ten. I, ten was yeah. just re goddamn ridiculous, but oh, yeah. they literally threw up their arms and said, let's have fun. I mean, and it's even it gets crazy. They they turn into almost a science fiction movie. They say, "Hey, what 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 is the science behind Jason re, his regenerating power?" And, and then they go into space, and he's built into like Jason two point and shit. And I'm like, man, My, look, it got to a point where these were so stupid. Now well, you go, oh, but, now you're going to start criticizing this? But literally, what they did in that was they they made fun of the rest of the series. It was clear that this was a tongue-in-cheek movie. Yeah. That great scene where he enters the hollow deck and they cre- recreate <laughs> Camp Crystal Lake and the two girls, like, they, they whip their tops off and they're like, we're gonna have smoke pot and have premarital sex. Oh, yeah. And, and so, of course... And he has that sleeping bag that he's beating he, up against yeah, the tree. Yeah, he loads him into a sleeping bag he's whipping him across a tree and they're like, ow, ow. He, and he's he, confused and shit. Yeah, because yeah, no. he doesn't get it because he doesn't understand the hollow technology. No, I don't care what anybody says. And I love, Ten is cool. I love, love, love the final shot of that movie where, you know, it's the two people and they're camping and, and Jason's been blasted out of the ship. You just kind of see him streaking through the atmosphere and he's burning up and it cuts down to these two who are camping and they go, oh, a shooting star. And oh, yeah, and it's like, that's fun. OK, that's cool. I mean, people, I, there are so many people who are offended by 10. I'm like. It, it, Fuck off. Come on. Uh, nine offended yeah, me. I mean, Eight offended me. Ten at least no, wanted to be Jason fun. takes Manhattan. That's a, yeah, that's offensive. And now, you want to talk about a film that got fucked by piracy. That was one of the first films to get screwed by piracy. It yeah. sat on a shelf for a year and a half. And as a result, a screener leaked and sure got did. online. And the opening weekend for that, it tanked because... All the geeks that wanted to see it had already gotten bootlegs of it at horror conventions or had downloaded it. And that was a, that was a clear screener, too, because when people yeah. downloaded it, it was crystal clear. And it was like, yeah. damn, I'm watching the movie at home. Yeah, no, that, yeah. Was, that was one of the very first films to get fucked by piracy. And uh, it's been infamous ever since for that fact. So, well, hey, there you go, man. It's uh, coming up on an hour right now. Really? Already? Jesus Christ. I know. Did you have anything else you wanted to do? No. You wanted to say? Yeah, yeah, to no. say? No. I'm, I'm going to go home and do something incredibly nerdy. So I'm... Uh, <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, I'm waiting till uh, 3 in the morning to call up this place in Britain called Forge World. And I'm making a very large, substantial order of geek toys. Okay, goddamn. Sorry, I asked, it's man. it's I nerdy. Know. I'm <laughs> no, you, you know how nerdy it is. I'm actually ordering the uh, the watchtower at Amundsen on Weathertop. Uh, you might as well have just been speaking French to me. I don't know dude, what the fuck that was. Except that you do. You know that really awesome sequence in the first Lord of the Rings movie where they're on top of this big crumbling tower. Yeah, and the Nazgul's come in, and it's where uh, uh, where Frodo gets stabbed. Yeah, it's like this really cool. So that's where you got area. stabbed in. Yeah, in Frankenstein, and, and it's called Amundsen the it's called the Watchtower at Amundsen on Weathertop, okay. and uh, uh, it's uh, there's a replica made from the cast from the uh, from the movie, and it's perfectly scaled to twenty eight miniature well, twenty eight millimeter miniature war game. You just had an orgasm right now, man. Yeah, dude, it's gonna it's me. gonna be pants are all sweet. wet right now. Look at you, this is- dude. I am I am. Uh, it is. It it's nerdly. All right, it, man. It, it makes it's and it's only three hundred and twenty dollars. It's uh, <laughs> well, I'm sure for a nerd like you, that's very much worth it, huh? It it, dude, it's gonna be fucking awesome. All right, well, I can't wait. I'm gonna go ahead and let you clean your pants, and uh, we'll we'll get on out of here. That's this right. has been uh, a couple of cold. Ones. Well, you know what? Before oh, we what? say that, this is the the last time you know I'll get a chance to say it before. But hey, hey guys, have a happy Halloween. Oh yeah, and we'll see you on the other side. Oh. Good night, everybody.